How to move the sun, stellar engine. Nothing in the universe is static. Welcome back. So before we get into it, the daily dance is live. So it's basically just breaking down the latest in science and business each and every day with some memes and humor in there to keep it fun. And it's very short, so you can keep up to date very easily, you know, and become smarter in a flash. So if I didn't say it before, that daily dance newsletter is completely free. In the Milky Way, billions of stars orbit the galactic center. Some, like our sun, are pretty consistent, keeping a distance of around 30,000 light years from the galactic center, completing an orbit every 230 million years. This dance is not an orderly ballet, more like a skating rink filled with drunk toddlers. This chaos makes the galaxy dangerous. Solar neighborhood is constantly changing, with stars moving hundreds of kilometers every second. Only the vast distances between objects protect us from the dangers out there. But we might get unlucky in the future. At some point... This theme playing in the background is totally inspired by uh, the good, the bad, the ugly theme. Could you guys hear it? Uh, if you haven't seen that movie, by the way, that is like one of my all-time favorite movies. It is so good. We could encounter a star going supernova, or a massive object passing by and showering Earth with asteroids. If something like this were to happen, we would likely know thousands, if not millions of years in advance. But we still couldn't do- I mean, the millions of years one's a bit debatable. Um, like, sure, we know Andromeda's gonna, you know, and the Milky Way are gonna literally collide, but that'll likely result in, you know, nothing hit- No stars colliding. So everything's so far apart. Um, so the millions of years one is like, mm, galaxies only 100,000 light years across. So don't really need to worry about that. Do much yeah. about it. It's not like Unless we're going to be around. We move our whole solar system out of the way. To move the solar system, we need a stellar engine, a megastructure used to steer a star through the galaxy. It's the kind of thing that might be built by an advanced civilization with Dyson Sphere level technology that's thinking about their future millions of- This would be a pretty easy way to find aliens, right? We should be able to detect any uh, stellar movement that doesn't look too, you know, natural. Years ahead of time. But how do we possibly move the hundreds of thousands of objects in the solar system? The good news is we can ignore all of that. We only stuff. need to move the sun, all the other stuff is glued to it by gravity and will follow it wherever it decides to go. There are lots of ideas about what a stellar engine might look like and how it would work. We've picked two grounded in our current understanding of physics that could be built in theory. The simplest kind of stellar engine is the Shkadov thruster, a giant mirror. It works on the same principle as a rocket. Like rocket fuel, the photons released as solar radiation carry momentum. Not a lot, but a bit. For example, if an astronaut turned on a flashlight in space, it would push them backwards very, very slowly. A stellar engine will work a little better than a flashlight because the sun produces a lot of photons. The basic idea of the Shkadov thruster is to reflect up to half of the solar radiation to create thrust and slowly push the sun where we want it to go. In order for the Shkadov thruster to work, it must be kept in the same place, not orbiting the sun. Although the sun's gravity will try to pull it in, it would be supported- I just keep thinking like Mexican standoff in the solar system because of this theme playing in the background. <laughs> by radiation pressure, which props the mirror up. This means the mirror would have to be very light, made of micron-thin reflecting foil from materials like aluminium alloys. The mirror's shape is important too. Just keep in mind, if you talked to people like 3,000, 5,000 years ago about, you know, geosynchronous satellites in orbit or altering the Earth's atmosphere so much so that the climate changes, or even talking about like redirecting rivers or drying up whole lakes, running out of oil, that would be crazy, and it would be unfathomable for these people. But it only took us like a hundred years. Satellites, it only took decades. So, you know, if you give us a billion years, maybe we could do this. Maybe it's not that crazy. Enveloping the sun in a giant spherical shell wouldn't work because that would refocus light back to the sun, heating it up and creating all sorts of unpleasant problems. Instead, we use a parabola, which sends most of the photons around the sun and in the same direction, which maximizes thrust. 
to prevent accidentally burning or freezing Earth with too much or too little sunlight, the only safe place to build a Shkarov thruster is over the Sun's poles. This means we can only move the Sun vertically in the plane of the solar system and one direction in the Milky Way, which limits our travel options a bit. But that is basically it. For a civilization capable of building a Dyson Sphere, this is a relatively simple endeavor. Not complicated, just very hard to build. At full throttle, the solar system could probably be moved by about 100 light years over 230 million years. Over a few billion years, it gives us near complete control over the Sun's orbit in the galaxy. But in the short term, this might not be fast enough to dodge a deadly supernova. That's why we thought we could do better. So we asked our astrophysicist friend if he could design a faster stellar engine for this video. He did, and wrote a paper about it that's been published in a peer-reviewed journal. You can find it in our sources document. We're going to call our new stellar engine the Kaplan Thruster. It works a lot like a traditional rocket. Shoot exhaust one way to push yourself the other. It's a large space station platform powered by a Dyson Sphere that gathers matter from the Sun to power nuclear fusion. It shoots out a very fast jet of particles at nearly 1% the speed of light out of the solar system. A second jet pushes the Sun along like a tugboat. The Kaplan thruster requires a lot of fuel, millions of tons per second. To gather this fuel, our thruster uses very large electromagnetic fields to funnel hydrogen and helium from the solar wind into the engine. The solar wind alone doesn't provide enough fuel though, and that's where the Dyson Sphere comes in. Using its power, sunlight can be refocused to the surface of the sun. This heats small regions to extreme temperatures, lifting billions of tons of mass off the sun. This mass can be collected and separated into hydrogen and helium. The helium is burned explosively in thermonuclear fusion reactors. A jet of radioactive oxygen at a temperature of nearly a billion degrees is expelled and becomes our primary source of propulsion from our stellar engine. To prevent the engine from just crashing into the sun, it needs to balance itself. You could even use planet hunting telescopes like uh, Kepler to look for really weird light signatures that are potentially coming from these thrusters. Uh, it sounds crazy, but you know, any way we can, like something like this to look for advanced species out there, I think is a good idea and something we should actually do. If, if, you know, if something's not prohibited by the laws of physics, we should definitely uh, look further into it. To do this, we accelerate the collected hydrogen with electromagnetic fields using particle accelerators and shoot a jet back at the sun. This balances the thruster and transfers the thrust of our engine back to the sun. In as little as a million years, this engine can move the sun by 50 light years, more than enough to dodge a supernova. At full throttle, the solar system can be completely redirected in its galactic orbit in 10 million years. But wait, won't we use up the sun this way? Fortunately, the sun is so massive that even billions of tons of material will barely scratch the surface. In fact, this megastructure will actually extend our sun's life since lower mass stars burn slower, keeping the solar system inhabitable for many more billions of years. With a Kaplan thruster, we could turn the entire solar system into our spaceship. For example, by orbiting backwards in the galaxy and colonizing hundreds or thousands of stars as we pass by them. It may even be possible to escape the galaxy entirely, and stellar engines are the kind of machines built by civilizations thinking not in terms of years or decades, but eons. Since we know that our sun will die one day, a stellar engine could allow the far future descendants of humans to travel to other stars without ever having to venture into the terrifying dark abyss of interstellar space. Until we build a stellar engine, we're adrift and subject to the whims of the galactic sea. We may not like where it leads us. Maybe our descendants will set sail and become an interstellar species for millions of years to come. I kept bringing up that Mexican standoff and uh, the theme in the background. I was just imagining like 
you know, three stars that have this sort of drive and they've, you know, arrived at each other and it's an, a Mexican standoff and they're just looking at each other, you know, and waiting to see which one fires at which one. <laughs> it's such a mathematically interesting problem, the uh, Mexican standoff, because it's like you have to decide which person you're going to shoot. Uh, and, you know, then the other one ha will see that you've shot that one, so I shoot you and I survive. <laughs> Such an interesting problem to figure out, uh, but I was imagining the sci-fi story to that, and that would actually be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Like these three advanced alien species, and you know they're just in this Mexican standoff, and they don't know who to shoot first because they want to survive, right? Imagine they've got these giant, you know, mega laser sun things that uh, can just destroy a Death Star, if you will, but uh, a star version. <laughs> So how realistic is this Kaplan thruster? Well, clearly the math works out. They just said a some dude wrote a paper on it, which is awesome, by the way. You know, we wouldn't be able to do that today, but I think that sounds theoretically reasonable. But there is massive problems with it. It's very interesting how he's going to shoot a giant, whatever he's shooting, into the sun. You know, that could cause some significant problems, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, and then you'd want to be careful as well where he's um, firing that other thruster. I wonder if he calculated how big the jet coming out the back would be. Because it could actually be quite enormous. <laughs> um, so I wonder, this is such an interesting question. I love it. I think this is a great idea. If we were to venture too close to other star systems, that would be a very bad day for our solar system. Like a massive problem. Even going slightly closer would be a massive problem. You know, the gravitational influence of that other star would be a problem for our system. Uh, you know, there was a recent study that showed if a star, another star come too close, it would only have to move Neptune's orbit like a very insignificant amount. I think it was like 0.2 or maybe even 2%. No, it was like 0.2%, I think. Um, and that could result in Mercury being flung out of our system, ejected. Or, you know, the, the big uh, ice giants or gas giants are basically, basically our solar system collapsing, okay? So, you can see the tiny perturbations that, re uh, you know, would result in catastrophe for our system. And you might then say, well, if we're capable of building this huge engine that can move this, uh, the sun, surely we'd be able to, you know, put those devices around the planets to keep them in uh, motion. And yeah, I guess you could, but this is all starting to sound very difficult. Um, I'm not saying impossible, but obviously moving planets is a lot going to be a lot easier than moving the sun. <sighs> it would be very, very difficult. I'm, I think if you're going to do this, you have to put thrusters around the planets. <laughs> because, yeah, if you've got no control over the direction you're traveling with your thruster, you would need to. Otherwise, your solar system probably going to collapse or eject some planets and wreak all kinds of havoc. And because our Earth is in a very delicate place, uh, you know, in the habitable zone where liquid water can exist. You know, you go a little bit further this way, or a little bit further that way, outwards. Uh, you know, it's a really bad time for us. So then you'd have to consider contingency plans for that as well. So uh, all all kinds of problems and things you'd actually have to consider. Just because the engine works mathematically doesn't mean it's very practical. So keep that in mind. You know, physicists forget that a lot because we just care about if the math, math checks out. You know, cool. But I think it's definitely a possibility. So we should definitely look at other star systems uh, with our telescopes to see if this is actually happening out there because it could be a way to find aliens. You know, all we have to do is kind of look if there's any some kind of artificial movement of stars. Having these engines, these huge, you know, man-made things around the sun they'll probably get destroyed fairly easily depending on where you put them around the sun because, you know, our sun flares a lot around the equator. So I guess you could just not put it around the equator. So, you know, because CMEs and solar flares, CMEs, coronal mass ejections, literally are shooting off matter from the sun. Uh, that's going to, yeah, really be a bad day for your engine. So I guess you could say, okay, let's put it around the pole, poles and things like that. But messing with the magnetic field of the sun, which we really don't understand, where how it's produced, where it comes from. It's on this weird 11-year cycle we don't even understand. And this 11-year cycle just seems to be able to just stop occasionally 
um, you know, in the last 300 years, we've been so confused because there's there's periods where it just stops for like 75 years and we don't understand this. And we recently observed it in another star. But anyway, so you put this engine around the poles. That'll do for today's video, guys. Make sure you subscribe. I'll catch you next time.